the picture you see of a person bending over near a vehicle, the man is called Timothy MacArthur. Timothy J. MacArthur. Uh, this was a secret service officer who literally is the fourth person in the U.S. Secret Service to have taken a bullet for the president. I do not know about the other three, but I know about Timothy J. MacArthur, the one you see the picture here. He, it was on Monday, 30th, yeah, Monday, Monday 30th uh, March 1981, when President Ronald Reagan was leaving Hilton Hotel, Washington, D.C., and he was about to enter the vehicle you are seeing, then uh, I, I, I think you have seen VIP, uh, VIP protection guys, the Secret Service guys, whenever VIP is there, they, they are in suits and they surround him. He was one of them, and then when he turned aside, he saw some movement, and the movement, he, he concluded that the movement was so quick that he could not draw out his pistol. Uh, he did what we were taught in GSU training school. He did what we were taught in a VIP protection course, that be ready to take a bullet for the VIP. So as you see him stretching this way, he saw somebody aiming at the president and he went that direction and made himself the shield. He deliberately, willingly and knowingly took a bullet that was meant for the president. Of course, more than one bullet was shot, but he took a bullet for the president. He lived to tell. Now, when I was when I joined, uh, when we left Kiganjo for GSU training school, they kept telling us that, that for the VIP, even for citizens, you should be ready to take a bullet for the good of the country. Kiganjo, as compared to GSU training school, Kiganjo is mostly like an academy. Uh, mostly, you know, you, you are taught how to open a, an inquiry file, a murder case, you are op or how to open a, a traffic file, how to handle the OB, the sales register, uh, how to study different laws. But in GSU training school, and much later in the VIP protection, we were taught on how to take a bullet. During that time, I can be sincerely tell you that, uh, especially during the this uh, the paramilitary course at uh, GSU training school. I was saying, and we were saying, that basically that would be things that are being taught for that. And our relationship with the GSU trainers was not good because we had come from Kiganjo, and uh, for a training that uh, took six months for a GSU recruit, ours was being crammed into less than three months. Actually, if I would have overstayed in GSU for 10 more days, that would have reached three months. And then there was the sibling rivalism between us, the GD, and the GSU. So you'd find that uh, the relationship was not all that good. But I do remember asking in Kiganjo why the teachers were being called instructors. I was told that um, in school, teachers teach, so they are called teachers. In the university, they lecture. So we were being told that uh, a university lecture would come into a hall, do the lecturing, whether you got it or not. And most of the work is just talks as if he's talking to himself. And that is how the name lecture comes. And the teacher was to teach. And then we were told that uh, primary students, primary school students, uh, teachers were, in, were, were taught that they have to constantly make an eye contact. The pupil in the teacher's eye and the pupil in the student's eye 
had to always be in contact. So when the teacher is going around, he or she made sure that he or she made eye contact with the students. And that is why the students were called pupils, because it was the duty of coming, having pupil-to-pupil -pupil contact. When it came to secondary school, uh, of course we had secondary school and high school. So secondary school, a student is allowed to study. That is why the student is, is no longer a pupil, but now a study. But high school, that is advanced level, it was a mixture of student and uh, lecture, whereby I'm also an A-level person, whereby you are being taught a mixture of secondary education and university. Uh, you would be taught, you'd study and you'd also be lectured on. But when you went to a disciplined force, the teacher was called an instructor because he will give you instructions. Uh, it is a mixture of teaching and ordering. And then uh, I want to pay tribute to, I told you that Timothy MacArthur was the fourth person to take a bullet for the United States president. I also want to take, uh, in Kenya we had such cases, and I want to take cognition of them. In fact, this step is meant to honor them. Uh, remember the incident in the Kapenguria police station, where a suspected Al-Shabaab teacher had been jailed had been placed in the Kapenguria police, police cells. And then one of the police officers who was a, a, a silent, a mall, an Al-Shabaab mall, went and took over the police station. There was a GSU officer, Freck Company, who was from Kisi. He wanted to marry but then the wreck company had, he wanted to marry at around the same time that the wreck company was going to the U.S. to be trained by uh, Coast Guard and the Marines. So he had to postpone his marriage, went to the U.S.A. for advanced military training. He came back to Kenya. Again, he had to start organizing for marriage. And when they had agreed uh, on the marriage day, he was given... Uh, he was a corporal, not a very senior officer. He was a corporal, and uh, when he now had his marriage, uh, during his honeymoon, the, 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 the Al-Shabaab mall, a sleeper cell, we call it sleeper cell, in politics is where they use uh, mall. A sleeper cell is uh, an, uh, an agent of the enemy who penetrates an area and stays among you for a long time until when such a time that he is supposed to act for his uh, people. That is when he now wakes up and acts. So this was a policeman who was working at Kapengura police station, but he was a silent Al-Shabaab uh, sleeper mall, sleeper agent, or a mall if you want to. So when the time came, took up a rifle, and the, the platoon, not, if, not the platoon, platoon is a bit high, the section, it was decided that they make what we call a section attack. A section attack, in uh, military terms, the smallest uh, formation is a section. Then you go to platoon, then you go to company, then you go to brigade, no, you go to battalion, then you go to brigade then you go to army such things so the smallest thing headed by a corporal is what is called a section so it was decided that a section be the one that goes and coordinates at, at uh, Kapenguria police station and which section the next section on standby was his section uh, the corporal who was acting as a section commander in his uh, honeymoon was not used to that section. So this man had to be told to move. Uh, he, a plane went to Kisi to take him, and he joined the other Askaris at Kapenguria airstrip. 
and from there they organized on how to neutralize this person. They had already been told he's a police officer and uh, such and such a thing. And then when they went to Kapenguria police station, none of them had gone to Kapenguria police station. It was just that uh, when these people are going, you know, the REC company, as they are headed to, to the place of, that is when they are given brief that you are going to a police station or you are going to a field and, and there are maps and whatever they are. As they are moving, as the vehicle is moving, they are being briefed. So you, the vehicle arrives and then you go for action. The unsung heroes of Kenya, security. So when they went and uh, they, he, he, they were not sure where this police officer, who was an Al-Shabaab sleeper cell, was hidden. So he chose deliberately to expose himself so that this fellow shoots him and then the other members of his section uh, of the wreck company know where the person is. Imagine this is a young man who has postponed his marriage twice and is on his honeymoon and then he deliberately decides that the country was better than his family. That is a hero. The second hero, also again from REC company, Garissa had been attacked. He was also a corporal. And uh, when they went, I've said how they are being briefed. Uh, on the eight hours that they were using on the road, all the way from uh, Ruiru to Garissa, four hours, not eight hours, four hours, they were being briefed on how the university is and so on. So they went there, cleared the place, but at the nick of the time, he saw, this corporal, saw that the Al-Shabaab fellow had removed his grenade and was about to throw it on a number of students. He took, he took hold of the hand of that uh, Al-Shabaab fellow got hold of the grenade and placed it between the him and the terrorist. He took a deliberate move. He knew what was going to happen, but he saw that it was better for him alone to die than 12 or so people, students, to die. How many? Can you do that? Me, I'd be reluctant to do it. So he took it, held this man, and you see, he held that man tight, the way people dance rumba, and the the grenade blew up and the two died. And that is why Inspector General Boynet, while attending the funeral, promised to those the, the, the promised people in his village that if there are five young men who are physically fit medically fit to join the police, he promised to, to, to employ them into the National Police Service. I salute those gallant soldiers in Kenya and around the world, people who can take a bullet for the good of the country.